In this video, I'm going to show you how to add 3D into an HD FireMonkey application. So we'll say File New, FireMonkey Desktop Application, C++ Builder, and say HD FireMonkey Application. Now we have a form to place our standard components in. But if you want to add 3D capability to an existing 2D application, you can use the Viewport 3D. And so the Viewport 3D is a component that gives you a 3D place inside of an HD application to work with 3D shapes, 3D objects. Up at the top of our client area, we'll put a panel. And let's align this panel to the top of the client area. And inside of that, we'll put uh, a checkbox. And we're going to use this to enable our 3D objects like we did in, in previous videos. For the rest of the client area, we'll put our viewport 3D. So we'll align it to the client area. We can place spheres and other kinds of FireMonkey 3D objects. So let's uh, scale this and make it uh, smoother edges like we saw in previous videos. Let's set the depth and height and width. And we'll put that down here. We can put a 3D rectangle and put that over here and maybe use the uh, little grabbers to uh, make them different size and rotate it around. And again, as we saw before, the 3D rectangle has three different material sources, the back, the shaft, and the source. And the sphere has, uh, has one material source. So we'll put in some material source, a color material source, for example. And we'll set that to be blue. And we'll take the sphere and set its material source to be the first one. And we'll take the rectangle and set its uh, shaft to be uh, the first color. And we'll leave its front and back uh, being uh, red. That's fine. Let's look at a new material source for the 3D object, for example, for the sphere. In this case, a T-Light material source. The T-Light material source has several properties, the ambient light, diffuse light, emissive light, and the specular light. We can also set a texture uh, that can be lit. Let's go back to our earth texture that we used previously. And let's associate that light material source with the sphere. So we go to choose the sphere. Instead of the color material source, we'll take a light material source. And then we'll add a light uh, into the scene. And notice that while there was no light, the earth was dark. We can turn off the light and turn it back on. And there are different light types, a directional light, a spotlight, and a point light. The so spotlight depends on where it's pointing, and notice it lights up the Earth by directional. And notice that we're lighting up uh, the planet as we move the light around. So that might be an example. So we can go and enable rotation again of our sphere with the light material source with the light and a texture. Let's put an animation on the sphere like we did before. It'll be a float animation. And we'll associate that with the sphere. And we'll set the rotation to be 5 seconds. And we'll set loop. And we'll set start from whatever the current value is as we start and stop it. And we'll go for 360 degrees. And we'll leave it disabled for now. And we'll do a linear interpolation. And then on the code for the change event, we'll set that float animation one, we'll set it enabled equal to not a float animation enabled. So it can toggle. And then we'll run this example. And if we enable it, up oh, we forgot to set the property that we wanted to animate. So let's go back to float animation and set the property. In this case, we want to set the rotation angle Y so that the Earth rotates. And while we're at it, we'll also uh, animate uh, the rectangle. And we'll set it uh, to loop in five seconds. And we'll set its property to be the rotation angle Y associated with the rectangle. Let me make this a little smaller. 
like some floating uh, shape uh, around the Earth. Maybe a UFO. Now notice with the light being over towards the left, it's lighting up uh, part of the Earth. Uh, as the Earth rotates underneath, we'll see the light showing up. And I forgot to set a value, so let's uh, have it rotate uh, around 360. Let's get it to auto-reverse while we're at it. So we'll put an animation for for the rectangle, and we'll set float animation to, to be enabled, and it'll toggle, just like the uh, sphere will toggle. We can run this, and now we've got the rotating rectangle. And notice the light, in this case, is only associated with the T-light material source on the sphere. And we've got our 3D rectangle doing uh, auto-reverse as it rotates around and hits the end and reverses back. And this is an example of how you can add 3D using a viewport 3D into your 2D applications. And we can move this light around. I have the sun coming from the, the southern hemisphere, for example. Now we've got lighting coming from the, I guess it's summer in the southern hemisphere now. 